In this video, we will cover Booth's algorithm, at least a visual of it at work. This video does not contain any programming code. I'm sorry about that. Now, Booth's algorithm can be used to multiply signed integers. There are a few things to be familiar with before we get started. In a multiplication problem, there is a multiplicand and a multiplier. We are going to use the upper half of the product register to store a calculation. We are going to use the lower half of the product register to store the multiplier, and by the last iteration or repetition, it will contain the product of our multiplication problem. We will keep up with five values during this algorithm, as well as the iteration completed or the repetition completed. We'll keep up with the product register, the multiplicand, the current bit, the previous bit, and the operation. Booth's algorithm uses the leastmost bit of the current and previous product register to determine which operation to perform. It may not make a lot of sense right now, but it should by the end of the video. So let's get started. Here we'll set up a chart to track our values. We will start by looking at the numbers in the multiplication problem. For simplicity's sake, we are going to use five bits for the signed integer. The binary number for 2 is 00010. And the binary number for negative 4 is 11100. We'll come back to where the negative 2 comes from in just a moment. Remember I said that the algorithm uses the current and previous bits to determine the operation to perform? The operations are performed on the upper half of the product register. Here are the operations. 00, zero means do nothing. 01 means to add the multiplicand. 1, 0 means to subtract the multiplicand, and 1, 1 means to do nothing again. Now that we've seen the operations, let's go back to that negative 2. Why do we need to know the binary value of a negative 2? Well, the operation 1, 0 means we need to subtract the multiplicand. Since the multiplicand is positive, what's an easy way to subtract it? Well, we add the complement of the multiplicand, therefore negative 2 is the complement of 2. So if we add the binary value of negative 2 to the product register, we are still actually subtracting it since it's a signed integer. That's why I recommend using the complement of the multiplicand for the subtract operation. Now we will cover the steps for the algorithm. First, populate the product register with 0 in the upper half and place the value of the multiplier in the lower half. The multiplicand needs to be populated with the correct value, and it does remain the same throughout all the repetitions. The previous bit needs to be set to zero since there was no previous bit to refer to. For step two, now look at the leastmost bit of the product register and place its value in the current bit value. Now look at the current bit and the previous bit together. Here it is zero, zero. We can see that the 00, zero operation means we do nothing to the product register. Although we do not need to perform an operation on the product register, we still need to right shift the product register for step number three. We have to repeat the second and third steps here until the number of iterations or repetitions is greater than or equal to the number of bits being used, in our case five you can see where we've performed a shift to the product register. To populate the previous bit, we just look at the value of the last current bit, the current bit of the last iteration, and the leastmost bit of the product register becomes the current bit. The operation is 0, 0 again, so we do nothing to the product register, but we do have to right shift it. Again, we populate the previous bit and current bit appropriately and determine the operation. This time we have to subtract the multiplicand. That's where the complement of the multiplicand comes into place. Here's the calculation. Here's the product register. Here's the complement of the multiplicand. Here's the new product register value after we add the multiplicand to the upper half of the product register. Remember, even though we're subtracting, we're actually adding because we're using the complement. Now we need to perform a right shift, just like we do after every operation. Here in repetition 3, we have the shifted product register value. We have a current bit of 1, a previous bit of 1. So the operation is to do nothing on the product register, 
but we still need to right shift it. Here in repetition 4, we have the shifted product register value. We have a current bit of 1 and a previous bit of 1, so again, the 1 1 operation is to do nothing to the product register, but we do need to right shift it. Now, here in repetition 5, we have the shifted product register value. We have a current bit of 0 and a previous bit of 1. So the 0, 1 operation is to add the multiplicand to the product register upper half. This is the last repetition for our algorithm since we're only using 5 bits. On the last repetition, we will only add the multiplicand to the product register and stop. Since we do not have another iteration or repetition, we will not right shift the product register. Now we can see that the lower half of the product register contains the correct answer. The signed integer value of 11000 is negative 8 in base 10. I hope you found this video helpful.